Feeling, I need to rekindle that fire because I'm, I'm constantly stressing that we are not going to do this alone. And as um, Special Agent Weavido said, you're our eyes and ears. And, and I will depend on you because I will never have enough cops to be everywhere. No matter how many police we're fortunate enough to get money to hire, we will not be everywhere. But the community is. And, it, and, and as we earlier stated about criminals picking a target, well, are they going to go to where the, there are no lights, or are they going to go to the well-lighted community? And you know, you, you put your lights on, and or you let the dog out and you look around. No criminal, criminal, a lot of criminals are, are crimes of opportunity, where they look for the path of least resistance. That all comes to neighborhood watches. Now, um, I meet with the Laurel Street uh, Crime Watch. We had the Alter Street, uh, people from Alter Street come. Alter Street goes to the uh, Northgate Crime Watch. Little by little, I'm trying to go to all of them, and I, I solicit each of you to say, you know what? We're going to bring a friend this time, and, and we're, going to, we're going to kick this off or get it started again because we believe in our community. No different than we have a partnership. What I'm trying to do is to start to get the crime watches to talk to each other. Because as I stress, criminals don't have boundaries. But I can tell you from my own experience that tonight the same kids that are breaking into the cars on Alter Street tomorrow night are going to be over on Arthur Street. They don't care that it's your neighborhood or your neighborhood. That's how they move around. Arthur Street will be ready for it if they talk to Alter Street and they say, oh, last night seven of our cars were broken into. And another little secret about criminals picking their mark, the kids that are doing this go up and down the street and they lift the car handles. They're not smashing windows. They're looking for the cars that are unlocked. And when they unlock it, when they get into the car, I have so many people come to City Hall and say, they stole my cell phone. They took a gun that was under my seat. They took my GPS unit. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, I'll take the report, but why did you have a gun under your seat? Why was your car unlocked? Why did you leave the GPS there? You know, so it's all about educating ourselves. I believe that there is a great place in this community for crime watches. And I will solicit anyone who would like to start one to get in touch with me at City Hall. I'll get you to some of the meetings of the active ones. And I think together we'll make a difference. Thank you. I'd like to also applaud Philadelphia Division for some of the, the uh, unique techniques that they're using now, where you might have seen participation in some of these community groups start to dwindle, they're starting to use the technology of the day to reach back out to those communities. Most everyone, especially of a, a younger generation, uses Facebook now. What better way to use the social media? They've got a, a program called The Vert, which uses YouTube. People can go on, can look at YouTube and pass anonymous tips through YouTube. They don't want to make themselves known, but they watch it. They might be videotaping this stuff and they have no problem. If there are businesses in town that use video cameras uh, that have them either uh, around their businesses or in their businesses and their business is burglarized or robbed, they can turn that information over to the police. The police can, can make, uh, in Philadelphia for example, they're making a very short, maybe minute or two minute where they take the stills from the video, they put it into a thing, they put it out on social media and they get hundreds of thousands of hits on these videos and people report and say, you know what, I recognize that car, I recognize that tattoo, that I know that that tattoo when the guy reached his arm out, I saw it right here on his hand, I know who that is and they report it through social media. So evolve with the times as well. It may not be that you can continue to use the same old techniques. Um, it's where we push in one direction, the gangs pull in another direction. So it's about trying to evolve with the times and learn and embrace some of the new things that you can do to combat the problem. You can still use the tried and true methods, but change your tactics. The gangs are always changing theirs. We talked about, we did a story several months ago about Chief uh, DeAndrea and some other local communities using traffic laws, zoning, and code to get the probable cause to go after drug dealers and gang members. Is that a tool that can be used? Uh, I'll, I'll just throw that out there because 
when you're driving into the city and you see the Vascar lines on the road, to me, uh, only because I work in this business, I think to myself, that's a warning. You know, if you're speeding and you're a gang member and you have something in your car, now we've got you. Or we, 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 we're close to you now. We can see what's happening. I'll caution everybody in this room to that exact topic because one half hour ago tonight, my saturation patrol started in the high crime areas so that if you leave here tonight and you go down Wyoming Street or Alter Street or Broad Street or Diamond Avenue, watch your speed. And if you have window tinting, if you have window tinting, put the windows down because I have eight officers out for the next eight hours doing nothing but traffic stops and ordinance violations to try and combat crime. And it does work because that's how we get into the cars to identify stolen cars and who's dealing drugs and who's somewhere they shouldn't be. And it's amazing what you'll uncover if you just look beyond the license plate. If, if correct me if I'm wrong, but the convenience store robbers that were just nabbed and, and the federal, uh, the FBI agents got involved, wasn't the original arrest made, I believe Officer Minnick from McAdoo Police on a traffic stop or something was wrong with the vehicle? And he made the traffic stop, and that, that was the genesis of that investigation. That was part, part of it, I believe. He was I conducting believe. a surveillance of uh, a location that had been robbed previously. Based upon the surveillance that he had initiated on his own initiative, which you have to commend him for, he observed a vehicle that was known because of the communication between the departments. That vehicle did have a trap or a, um, uh, what, uh, what, equipment violation. He attempted to initiate the traffic stop based upon the equipment violation, which would have given him probable cause to identify the individuals in the vehicle. They took off, which led to the subsequent arrest, but it was his self-motivated efforts to initiate surveillance at a known location, taking advantage of them, their vehicle not being up to code, which resulted in the, the first big break in that case. The word resources continues to be utilized. The fiscal outlook for Luzerne County is poor at this point. How can Luzerne County, and I'll say by extension every other county, provide the resources needed to make a significant impact on this problem? I have a feeling it's going to our lawmakers. On this specific problem, I, 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 I think we talked about it from, from the time of the, the PowerPoint earlier. It's we all work together. It, we we all we all share we, all the members of the the Lackawanna County Prison. If if Kevin Kevin's agency needs something from us, we we can look into our databases. They help us. We help Luzerne County. We'll help Hazelton. It, it's it's everybody working together. It's not just you know we have 150 staff inside the prison. It's it's reaching out and using all these different agencies, and and th th that's the the, the financial gain for all these counties is, is sharing the information that all of us have. Not making, like, like in the past, it was if I needed information, I had to go out on my own, get that information when it was sitting on a computer a phone call away to just get it funneled to us. Um, that, that, that's a key thing, especially with the financial burdens of today, is working together with all, all the agencies. Is there a correlation between absentee landlords slash slumlords and drug dealers and gang members? What do we do with these landlords? We have a huge problem with absentee landlords in the city of Hazel. I would say all over Luzon County. Right. Um, and, and I think Hazelton ends up being a microcosm of the county, probably of the state, most likely of the nation in a lot of municipalities. And I personally believe that it's no different than when your parents aren't home and you're a kid and you do things that you know you wouldn't get away with if your parents were home. Like you didn't set the table and you didn't do your homework and you came home and you turned the TV on and your feet are on the table. Um, I believe that at least the city of Hazleton, as I'm, I'm sure other communities are trying to address through ordinances some of the blight, the projects um, no different than when you heard about Chicago um, taking back the community and or cleaning it up. You've got to clean up and, and you need the landlords to be responsible. Who wants to drive around a town that you've grown up in and because somebody thought it was good to live in New York and buy a property here and they're letting it fall apart and the city can't do anything about it, it just doesn't make any sense because the people who suffer 
are the people who live here. So currently through code enforcement, I know in, in Hazleton, and it's oftentimes that I look to Wilkes-Barre or call the district attorney's office for specifically for blight and or for absentee landlords. We're doing a rental registration ordinance right now, which I strongly support, not to say that every letter of the ordinance is going to be what it's gonna be when it finally passes city council, but we need something to start to hold people accountable for their actions. You wanna own a house in the city of Hazleton or in the county of Luzerne, then you need to be available when there's a problem to fix it and you need to be able to manage your tenants. Otherwise, there's ordinances that, that call them nuisance properties. If my officers have to go to your property three times within a six month period, you're a nuisance property. I need you to be able to police your own tenants. It's no different than policing your kids. It's your building. And so we do have ordinances, but I absolutely believe that there is a direct correlation between absolute or absentee landlords and any type of problems in those buildings. What is being done in schools? Are teachers aware? How can we make teachers more aware of gang activity? I know we talked about this in several of the other programs. Uh, and I know Rocco Patron's in the back. He's the principal of Hazel Area High School. Maybe, would you come up for a second, Rocco? Would, would you mind? I know I'm putting you on a spot here. Come on up. Well, I know I won't get any tips from the school district anymore on the, on the programs. I'm going to put you on a spot here. Uh, Hazleton has one of the largest uh, school districts in the state of Pennsylvania, and I know you've been very proactive. I have to say this, you know, over the years when we were covering different school districts, talking about being secretive, you know, if we call for a comment, what's happening in this school, in that school, not just Hazleton, we were lucky if we got a phone call back. But with Facebook and Twitter, the students are contacting us directly, and now there are no secrets out there, as we know, are very few secrets. So the question is, what are teachers being taught and uh, what are you up against in the schools? And that's a very good question, and I thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to talk about that. I have to turn to the experts. Um, we turn to, to many of the people you see up front here to educate our teachers, to educate myself, and get the word out. What we want to run here at Hazleton, I'm sure every principal, I can speak for every principal, we believe that every single student that comes into to our building deserves to be in a safe environment. We believe that every single parent, when they're sitting at work or sitting at home, they have to believe their child is safe. And the only way to do that is to educate ourselves, to educate our teachers, to look for the signs. And we, we do come across a situation where we know it's gang activity, we have to act in a firm and fair way. And do everything we can to let them know that we know you're in our building, but you're not going to take over this building. You're not going to take over this community. So we've been very fortunate. We've run our in-service days. Had, um, of course, Chris Orozco and, and, uh, and, and his partner, uh, uh, Mr. Lane, as, as well. They come in and they educate us. And we're, we're very, very fortunate. We have a, a state police officer in, in, the, uh, in the building. And, and um, I have no doubt we're making some, some, some good headway. Okay. And I, I Any? I could add to that a little bit. I know several years ago I was tasked by our department to go out and work with the districts in our troop area, which cover Columbia, Carbon, Monroe, and Luzerne counties. And it's basically evolved with Chris and myself over the last five or six years where we are coming to Hazleton and putting an in-service training on for their whole faculty. It's generated a tremendous amount of feedback for us from the different school districts that we've gone to. The communication lines are open, and, and like the chief said and some, some of the other people on the panel, that feedback helps assist us in our investigations when we're talking about gang members or other crimes that are committed many times by juveniles. And uh, so that door has been open from the perspective of the schools, and we continue to do that, and uh, it's really been very productive for us. I wanted to mention, thank you, uh, Rocco Patron. Thank you very much. Go ahead. One second. Um, just to expand a little bit. Um, we've done all the schools in Lackawanna County, but on top of that, with Terry Holmes and the Institute and Operation Gang Up, uh, me and Chris have been talking with, with the education subcommittee, and we're working on getting training for all the schools in the, the, the Northeast PA regional uh, done, and we're, we're gonna be meeting on that. I had spoken to Terry earlier tonight about it. Uh, we're gonna get together on that. And you know, hopefully we can make it a yearly thing for all the teachers 
uh, part of their act one uh, 80 days so they can have this training updated yearly because even in law enforcement your local police the uh, police officers they need the training the gang training as well um it it's ever changing and and they need people like kent and chris to to, to pass that through um i just wanted to say that you know with the institute that we're really going to push educating our teachers on the gang front I will, uh, go ahead and also, to expand from there, it's also, we're trying to educate the parents as well. Parents, um, um, people in the community, crime watch groups, I've had many people come to me and request to have someone come in and teach them. Especially, it's great for crime watch groups to learn and be educated as to what is a gang, what should I look out for? And um, that is one initiative that we do want to start as well. And anybody that wants it, I know I see a few people out there from Crime Watch groups um, that just to contact us, and we will make sure to, to set it up and plan a program for you. I want to add that this program will be broadcast on PCN Pennsylvania Cable Network. Uh, I'm not sure what date it is. So if you're watching, I'm sure there are students and parents around the state watching this. What do you want to tell students, especially, who might be saying, I know this is happening in my school. I know this guy or that group or that clique is a gang, but I'm afraid to come say anything to anybody, including my mom and dad, because they'll come after me. What advice do you have for them? What, what can they do? There, there is, there's a lot of times where people stress that to law enforcement, and we're looking for the information we don't always have to identify, oh, this is the person who gave us that, you know, that tip, and, and there's ways for people to re remain anonymous. But I, I stress no different than New York City. If you see something, say something. You know, the, the, the first step is to, to get the information somehow, some way, to the people that sit at this table. Child goes home at night. He can pick up the phone and call the school. No one's going to answer. Leave a voicemail. Tell them where to look. At least give them a route to go down and, and at least get that information out to them. We you have, know, the, the, we the, have the, tip lines. I mean, most police departments have some type of, of tip line. We have a drug tip line, a gang tip line. Ours is really a crime hotline. We we use an analog voice recorder with an old tape that I probably won't ever be able to replace, God forbid it breaks from, you know, from wearing it out. But we do that for a reason, because we don't want caller ID on that phone. There is no secret any automatic number identification, automatic location identification. We don't use 911 technology to track somebody back. We're happy for the tips. And for the students, for the parents, for anyone that that are scared to come forward and to give us that information, we are setting up a, a, a tip line for gang information that anybody that is scared to come forward, believe me, we understand. We know, we know how scary it is to face a gang member. We know the, the consequences some people feel they would have if they came out and said, well, I know what this person is doing. So we want to create a tip line. It, you, you don't have to give your information if you don't want to, but that you can provide that information and share it with law enforcement. We're fortunate in the Hazel Area School District for a lot of reasons. As a matter of fact, my Outlook calendar this morning at 7 a.m., reminded me that I had a gang task force. And anytime my phone says gang, I get confused. I wasn't sure if it was the Luzerne County Gang Task Force meeting, if it was the Hazel Mary School District Gang Task Force of which I'm on, or if it was this panel tonight. Law enforcement and communities and the district are doing something about gangs. I look at gangs as the epitome of bullies. And starting Monday, the district kicks off their bullying education curriculum. Over 2,000 employees of the district have been trained in how to handle bullying. So if there are students out there that would like to report something, they can immediately go to any member of the district and report anything they want. And I'm confident now that the district will get it to either the law enforcement members of the Hazel Area School District's police department, the state police who work right in the school, or, or whoever it needs to go. But my suggestion would be to anybody, students or the community, if you have information, somehow, some way, get it to 
you know, uh, somebody in a position of authority. Should we be concerned about graffiti? When do we know it's just harmless, harmless vandalism or true gang markings? Is there, is there uh, a difference? There is a difference. Uh, and it takes, I mean, we're still, Kent, Kent Lane and myself are still learning I mean, to read the, the, the writing uh, that, that's there. Uh, the best thing to do is to contact law enforcement let them know about it. Uh, I always encourage people to, you know, if you're going to see it, make sure you report it. Then we need to remove it. Uh, and what we'll do is a lot of times uh, we work a lot with uh, Trooper Basic, who's assigned to the uh, high school. And if he sees something, if uh, any of the administrators see something, they'll contact us. But we work very closely. And one of the, the benefits of this task force approach is even the people who weren't directly related to the task force uh, Luzerne County uh, District Attorney's Office, uh, Luzerne County Probation, uh, the Juvenile and Adult, uh, as well as State Parole. We work with all of them, and as they, throughout their day, throughout their travels, as they find stuff, they'll send it to us. Uh, sometimes they'll send it to us because they've recognized that it's gang-related, and we basically will keep track of it, or they don't know what it is, and they'll send it to us. And, you know, if I, if I can determine what it is, or, or Kent, or, or Captain McGuire, but it's the eyes getting to, to look at it. If somebody writes it on the wall, nobody looks at it, nobody records it, then it, it's kind of sometimes it's a missed opportunity for us to see what's going on. Sometimes it is just tagging. Uh, people basically wanting to be artists on, on garage doors and, and on buildings, but sometimes it is gang related. And, and the only way really to determine that is to let somebody take a look at it. The simplest answer there might be, you don't need to know whether it's tagging or whether it's graffiti for a gang. All you need to do is see it, take a picture of it, send it to law enforcement, let them make the determination. You don't need to know what it means, and you don't have to say, oh, that's pretty. Uh, you can say it's all pretty, but still take a picture, send it to the appropriate individuals, they'll make that determination. What about, and here's a question we get all the time, we'll, or we'll get phone calls about sneakers thrown over power lines. Different, we've all heard it. Is there any truth to that, that uh, truth to the f belief that these sneakers in neighborhoods are signs of gang activity or places where you should not go if you're a member of a certain gang or this, this neighborhood's marked for some kind of trouble? I can tell you the last, we'll just go for the last two dozen uh, arrests we've done. I haven't seen any sneakers over the door, over the, uh, <laughs> on the telephone line. We, we go... I, I, get, I, get a, I get a different type of question, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say this is what I tell them. I haven't seen it. Doesn't mean it can't happen. You know, just be aware. Be aware of what's going on in your neighborhood. You see it? See what it is. Report any suspicious activity to the police. And then when you're reporting that, tell them the sneakers are over the telephone line. So is know, that one of those urban legends? Yeah, yeah you know, I, I mean, I don't want to say it's not going to happen because, oh. you know, as soon as you say that, it, it, tomorrow morning you're gonna have a report that you know I said this and this is what happened but it, you know it, it just it, you need to be aware of the situation not the urban legend stuff you know yeah, that started years ago in the 70s yes. I can remember back then there so can I yeah. yeah you know the, yeah. the other one that goes around is if you flash your headlights mm -hmm. yeah. you know I've never heard of that Net, I mean I've heard the urban legend but I've never heard of it really happening However, when I flash my headlights at someone, I'm checking my rearview mirror to make sure no one's following me, right? You know, so I don't want to tell you it's not going to happen, but I haven't heard of it either. You know what I'm saying? Okay, a specific question about the uh, tag or number 666 a, uh, as graffiti. Does that mean anything? I mean, other than some say the n number of the devil, but in, uh, in a neighborhood, this, they're asking they have the number 666 painted through their, na their neighborhood. Without looking at it, without looking at the context that it's put in, it's kind of hard just by the numbers. Uh, numbers mean something, uh, the way they're presented, uh, the way they're written. Uh, so just without looking at it, I, I couldn't tell you 100% yes or no. Okay, will gangs retaliate? And we cover stories where alleged or suspected gang members or the authorities will come out and say, this member's a member of a gang from Philadelphia, New York, what have you. Will they retaliate in some way in the neighborhood or against law enforcement or anyone if their member is arrested? Uh, Blatant retaliation. No, no. Typically, we don't see. I mean, usually when somebody gets arrested, they're concerned about themselves uh, and how can they get out of trouble. Uh, I have not seen where, where it's a, 
they go out and necessarily retaliate against an individual. Uh, if it is something where, and without getting into at all the specifics, depending on the type of case it is, uh, you know, how they were arrested, the nature and the way that was done. Uh, but in general, uh, no, we don't typically see that. I think uh, citizens in the community might feel more intimidated by individuals that have not been arrested yet or have not become the focus of an investigation than what they will after handcuffs are put on those individuals and are actually charged. Uh, the, the intimidation comes from the walking down the street and thinking that I own this street and you better get back in your house. That might be more readily apparent than when that same citizen is standing on their front porch watching that guy all of a sudden his pants aren't hanging down around his knees anymore they're being pulled up because there's a belly band and he's cuffed to that belly band then the intimidation that that individual may have put out there doesn't exist anymore and the actual retaliation following an arrest um, it, it's more something more something that happens on tv than in real life uh, but it, it's once you get over the intimidation and, and actually move forward uh, in most cases, th there's a lot of verbiage, but not actual retaliation. We had, you know, on a note from the media media perspective, and I mentioned this at several of the other gang forums, at WBRE TV, we do not, we intentionally do not say if they have a gang name in their, like a surname in the middle, whatever, we don't report that. We may say, unless, the police will say they're a gang member, but we're not saying John Carboni, whatever his last name is, a member of. They love that stuff. You know, they mug for the camera. So we, we have made, it, uh, in our effort, in a small way maybe, not to give them the glorification of being a gang member. Well, one more thing, Andy, is that as the community looks up to this table, it's important for everybody to remember, although everybody's bright and shiny in, in our shirts and ties and business attire, we're in the arrest business. And it's a crime to do that type of intimidation of a witness. Should we come into your neighborhood and we're fortunate enough to arrest a couple of street thugs, and then there's a couple of other people that are going to try to intimidate the people that live in it. That's also a crime. We're just as happy to get that tip and come back and arrest those individuals. And then, as my good friend Detective Orozco likes to say, we'll find them a place to stay. So, but that's a crime also. We'll leave the light on for them. <laughs> we'll leave the light on for you. Question for the DA. How will the proposed legislation mentioned by State Senator Johnny Dechak affect your work going forward? Make your job, hate to use the word easier, but more productive in getting convictions, not just the arrest, convictions. Right now, when an individual is charged with a crime and say they are involved in the gang and the gang had some influence of that in that crime committed, we can't do anything about it. If this legislation is in place, when this legislation is in place, this will help us enhance their sentencing, keep them off the street longer, keep our community safer, and that is what we want to do. That is our main concern. Everyone here, that is what we are looking forward to. I have to just, uh, DA Salavantis, she, since she's come into office, uh, Kent and I have, have really noticed uh, uh, an increase in the interest in the district attorney's office and what exactly we're doing. Because we've been doing this for years. Uh, but I have to applaud her in the efforts that she's making to actually take, take part in what's going on. Uh, she has assigned one of the county detectives to take part with, with our task force and some of the, the efforts that we're pushing forward. Uh, we have been uh, working with, with uh, counties, multiple counties, but I can say in the, just in the last, since uh, the DA has been in, in office, we've just seen an incredible increase in the cooperation with Luzerne County. And it's just, it is really nice to see. How can, how can service organizations assist in motivating youth, our young people, away from gangs? What advice do you have for uh, organizations that deal with youth to keep them away from gangs? I'm a strong believer if you give kids a job and give them a sense of pride in making their own money, that it's a huge step in, in pulling kids away from it. I, that's my own opinion on all the research and everything I've read. You give them a job 
encourage local businesses or yourself to hire them to mow your lawn, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm a true believer in that if they make their own money, they're, it, it can help stare them away from that. If you don't give a kid something to do, he'll find something to do. So right. kind of hands are the tool of <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that statement. I just couldn't remember That's the it. exact verbiage. That's it. Okay. Um, why not toughen penalties for users, users of drugs to stop gang business? Why not? I think we covered that a little bit before. That's one aspect of gang activity is drugs. Okay, how can I start a crime watch? Not just get involved in one, how can I start a crime watch? The one thing I would recommend, there are active crime watches out there right now. Um, one that just started up is a Whitehaven um, crime watch. There's um, a huge crime watch in Wilkesbury. I would reach out to the people that started it in those areas, and they can give you some guidance as to how you can start it, what the best way to start it is, and what you need to do. So that would be my recommendation. A little bit closer to home, we have some great resources right here in the city of Hazelton for some crime watches that are extremely active and solve crime. Not only, again, the North Gate, uh, of which my wife is a part of, but, but my wife being with the state police, um, crime watches solve crime. So if you're, if you're looking to get one started, call me at City Hall. You know, I will get you in touch through email or cell phone contacts with other people that do the crime watches. Reach out to other crime watches in other communities. I, I'm not sure that there's anything that you're going to do to be actively involved, minus breaking laws, that, that is gonna be a bad idea don't need to recreate the wheel it's out there they're in form and you just follow the, the patterns and the, the the wheel that's already been formed second Monday of every month right. we're at right thank you mayor the second Monday of every month in West Hazelton at the community building um, West Hazelton has one of the largest crime watches in the area, and they welcome anyone who would like to see a meeting, how it's run, and, and, and I think that's a, another great resource right in our area. And you may not have to start another crime watch. Look at the neighboring um, areas. Maybe even join in. Like the one question before is they had a, just a couple people left in their crime watch. Maybe if you join together um, and build that crime watch, you can work together. Okay, we are teaching children of gang members how to teach them that get, we're teaching them gangs are bad, which translates into many times your mom and dad or uncles are bad people. So are we taking two steps forward, three steps back? But sometimes their mom and dad and uncle are bad people. <laughs> I don't mean that ignorantly, but the fact of the matter is you can't pick your relatives. You know, if your mom and dad are members of a gang, I'm sorry to say, your mom and dad are bad. You know, it doesn't mean that they can't reform and become good. So I don't think that anybody here is sitting there teaching kids, oh, your mom is no good, your dad is no good. But if they're active members of a criminal enterprise, then the fact of the matter is they're bad. And the odds are that kid is going to be part of that criminal mm -hmm. enterprise. Yeah. You know, it's the blessed in effect. Mom and dad are a member of a gang. That, that kid is going to be part of that gang. And they're only going to see the good in the gang. So, and yeah. if, if through the education and, and teaching them about these gangs, these, these children, if we could save one kid from um, keeping them from the gang and continuing it on down the line in their family, then we succeeded. Yep. Okay, just a comment from Vilma. We need to stop depending only on law enforcement and we need to get involved and not hide behind our curtains and shades and depend on someone else to do our part. Anyway. Andy, I'd like to add to that. Because everybody, if you look around the room again, everybody's different. Our physical stature, our age, our ability, and everybody's involvement can be different. There are different levels of what you're going to be able to do in a crime watch. 
If you're blind, use your ears. If you don't have hearing, use your eyes. If you could dial a phone, call. But the fact is that there is a spot for all of us in, in the community and in being involved. Uh, FBI Special Agent Jurak talked about Facebook and Twitter. Let me just throw this out there. And I'm being dragged into the next generation. My daughter bought me the iPhone about nine, ten months ago. And honestly, from my flip phone as a reporter especially, how did I survive? I don't know. But I would think these, this technology is a, a, a tool that is being underutilized. Are people afraid to use it to fight not just gangs, all kind of criminal activity. I mean, you can send a picture in a matter of seconds to a police website or a crime watch or what have you. I mean, I would think this is the most, to, and to be anonymous too. It's a tremendous tool, and uh, most of the gang members are extremely proud of their affiliation, and they post stuff all over Facebook. And uh, uh, we can bring charges on a variety of things. If you know an individual's a felon and he's got pictures of himself all over Facebook holding a weapon, that's great evidence for the DA to prosecute, for the U.S. Attorney to prosecute that individual as a felon in possession of a firearm. Um, unfortunately, or, or fortunately for us, uh, some of these individuals are not playing with a full deck and they post this stuff all the time. And it's nice for us to help connect the dots and put it all out there. And, and social media is a tremendous tool for law enforcement. And I, I encourage everyone, all the police departments, uh, the federal government, we're also embracing these techniques because it's, it's another path, another tool for us to employ on our tool belt to tackle the, uh, the overall problem. We are just about winding down, but I'm sure, again, with other people watching around the state when this is rebroadcast, what do you want to say to, again, the hardworking, average person who might be sitting back tight and maybe just tuning in and saying, it doesn't matter, I can't make a difference, or I'm afraid to come forward. What do you want to tell those folks how important it is for them to come forward and be involved in some way to the solution to this just gang don't, problem? Don't give up. Don't, you know, don't give in to them. Um, we need your help. The more you help, the easier it is for us. If, if, the, if they're going to sit back and do that, they've given up their neighborhood. Get up. Take pride in your own neighborhood. Get your neighbors involved. You know, if, if the more you talk to your neighbors and, and get them involved and, and make that tip, and as law enforcement gets involved and they put the case together, you, that, that's the one thing of doing different crime watch talks and community talks is everybody thinks it should happen in 30 seconds after they tell you something. It, it needs to be put together. One is there's no laws in Pennsylvania for being a gang member. People need to understand that right now. Um, but these tips will add up. And it takes time for the DA's office and the police officers and everybody else to put all this together. To take, to take down a gang, like, like it was said earlier, from the top, you want to try and get everybody involved. It takes time. If you give up a piece of information, don't worry about it. Eventually, I guarantee you, you will see on some type of newscast or in the paper that the people that you gave that one little tip up to are taken down and they're arrested and they're, they're sitting inside of a prison or, or they're behind bars somewhere. Just know that it's not going to be thanking you specifically for that, but know that you helped get that. And, and I think a lot of people, if once they do that, they'll realize that, you know what, Take a more, little bit more pride in my own neighborhood. Sometimes it's just that little glimmer of hope. It's like applause in an auditorium where nobody wants to clap because they're not sure if it's right. And then one person claps, and then before you know it, two, and, and then it's just a, a roar. And that's the same thing with getting involved. All you need is one person, because I guarantee this community that whether you're going to get involved or not, I will be out there. But I am not alone. There's 40 members of my department. And then we have the state police and the county detectives and the district attorney's office and the FBI and the Department of Corrections. A and eventually, regardless of your attitude, you'll recognize we are not going away. We are going to be doing this because we believe it's worth doing. And we have the people who fight for us in Harrisburg and Washington, D.C. And so somebody decides, I don't care if the rest of my neighbors want to do this. I'm making a call. And then 
your neighbor comes and stands next to you and it, and and before you know it everybody's doing it because it becomes the thing to do that's what i'm hoping for that quickly it will become the thing to do because if we don't do it i know what the alternative is go look around we need to get involved and I'd like to stress that to please trust your law enforcement. I, I hear sometimes that people don't know whether they should go to their law enforcement. Trust them. This is their community, too. They want to protect you just as they want to protect their family, their friends. They want to hear what you have to say, so go to them. We are here to fight together, fight for our community, and that's the bottom line. Okay, we have about five minutes left. Um, Mayor Schmidt, there's no microphone over there, but if you want to come up here and make a statement very quick, quickly. We're going to wrap up in a few minutes, and I'd like to have, if I can, uh, Congressman Lou Barlana and State Senator Johnny Dechak just make a closing remark. Uh, Frank Schmidt is the mayor of West Hazelden and, and probably one of the most proactive mayors in the area. The thing I was going to bring up but wasn't brought up tonight, it's related, I guess, to gang members. I, got a, I received a call early in the spring from a woman. She was all upset. And I said, what's the matter? She says, well, I have a double home that was selling on both sides. She says, I went over to get my mail, and there was mail made out to Hispanic people and different names, and they were all IRS checks. And she says, what do I do? I said, let me come over to you. We went over, we turned them over to the chief, and he called up somebody in Allentown, turned them over to the proper authorities. But that's what they're doing. They're going, you have to check people's houses with people that's for sale. They're not using them. They're getting mail sent to those houses. And that's what happened this spring in our place. But then I noticed in the news recently, it was on, they arrested, I think, 14 people connected to that operation. You know, I talk about being close to home. One of the arrests in a case, I won't say the specific case, was across the street from the home I grew up in. It was a major deal. And uh, my parents watched it unfold. Of course, my iPhone didn't get a ring, but it happened. And I'm looking at the arrest affidavit and the indictment, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at the address, and I'm thinking, hmm, we used to sit on that front porch years ago. But that's how close to home it was. And I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of not just the news reporters, but the Crime Watch, the law enforcement, the FBI, all of us remember how things, how we liked it or how we liked things to be. But I'm also realizing things are changing in all of our communities, but we don't have to give them up, give them up either. We don't have to surrender and say, it's yours, I can't do anything about it, because I really believe we can do something about it. Let me bring up Congressman Lou Barletta and Johnny Dechak for just a closing comment. Thank, thank you, Andy, and I think it's very clear that we have not given up. And, uh, you know, I want to thank all of you for making Operation Gang Up the success, and, and we're sending a very clear message. I want to thank Andy uh, for, for making sure that this message gets out among the community throughout northeastern Pennsylvania and central Pennsylvania. I want to thank all of these experts. There are so many other things that they could have been doing tonight. They did not have to be here. Uh, they've dedicated their lives to, uh, to making this our homes, our neighborhoods, our country a better place. And, and very seldom do they get a thank you. And I think tonight uh, we, we need to thank all of them for every single thing that you're doing to protect our families, our children, and the country and our cities that we love. I want to thank Senator Udichak uh, for putting p politics aside and saying let's get together and let's try to do something. Uh, and I want to thank each and every one of you for what you're doing. Uh, giving up your time and your commitment. And I think the message uh, to those uh, who probably aren't going to watch this on TV or read this in the paper, but I'm going to say it anyway, the message is very, very clear. Not in our neighborhoods and not with our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. I, too, want to thank Congressman Boyletta, thank our, our panelists, and our partners, the, the two words that I want, to take, want you to take from tonight that I think were the, the two words, two most important words said tonight by our panel, force multiplier, law enforcement, community crime watch, government, Harrisburg, Washington, our schools, our educators, our community leaders, our nonprofit community, our counselors, 
force multipliers. Operation Gang Up, we use that phrase because we wanted to demonstrate to those that want to take what we value most away from us, our safety and security in our neighborhoods and our schools. We wanted to let them know that we are going to multiply our force and drive them out of our communities, away from our kids, out of our schools. Force multiplier. We need to be a united community. We need to work together to take the expert advice and everything about this. And I think the reason Operation Gang Up has been so successful, not only is it the first time that two political parties put their politics aside, because one political party doesn't have an answer any more than the other. This is about friends, neighbors, family, community coming together. How do we solve a problem that is complex? It's not just a law enforcement problem. It's a social problem. It's a mental health problem. We need all hands on deck. Force multiplier. Let's come together as a community. I appreciate, again, the panel. I appreciate all of you and those watching that are going to join this effort to keep our communities, our neighborhoods, and most importantly, our children safe in Luzerne County. Thank you. That will conclude our program for tonight. There will be a fifth event, Gang Up event. Go to operationgangup.com, and we'll have information on that uh, in, the, in the coming weeks when the next event will be. Thank you for coming, and uh, again, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a safe night.